Hey traders, checking out of the stock market today. So tech sector fear is back. XLV and XLF for the most part of today held up against it. But into the end of the day, we did close weak with all of our sectors at the low at the same time. Is this the start of fear in the broader market or will this fear be relative to just the tech sector as it was last week? There's a lot to be looking at the cryptocurrency sector dumping as well. Let's check it out. So bear with me here. I'm a bit frazzled brained. I was in the zone all day trading. And then as soon as the bell rang, the stock or the cryptocurrency space dumped, traded that for an hour and a half. I am done, but we're going to put this video out. And then I got a live stream on cryptocurrency because I committed to that before all the wildness into the end of the day today. So 7 p.m. Eastern, I'll be live talking cryptocurrency. So SPY with a double top at the all time high, high of Friday, first thing, and a big red day. Red Marabozu, close at the low, and it's the most bearish day we've seen in two weeks because of the candle size and the close at the low. Look at the hourly and the bear volume, very notable. Next time we bounce, we're just looking for an hourly lower high. Today was also notable because all of our major sectors, XLF, XLV, QQQ, were at the low of the day at the same time, but only for a very short period of time at the end of the day, and it was almost a saved by the bell scenario and now tomorrow we have to be watching very closely. Does that happen again? Or do we see the rotation? QQQ and XLF have been very inversely correlated to each other for weeks, for 90% plus of the time that they trade. If they start dropping together, that's a red flag for the broader market to see further consolidation. That being said, SPY, we've got support at 413.68, 411.67, 410.59. 410.59 being the most important level for me personally that I'm keeping a close eye on. QQQ, let's go NASDAQ futures. So we last checked in here on the public video on Thursday and it was a double bottom. And the question was, do we form an equilibrium or can bulls prove it? Little bull flag and then Friday morning on jobs numbers, bulls proved it. To, to have a battle, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, finally change the trend bullish and then to break the low of Friday, first thing this morning, big red flag. That shows us a lack of follow through. As soon as QQQ broke the low of Friday, I started getting real aggressive bearish and I exited. So here's an example of a more experienced trader where something that's very difficult for a newer trader and it's just something you gotta work on for years, but I exited half of my SQQQ hedge swing position on Friday morning when this resistance broke and I entered back first thing this morning. So the ability to exit and then enter right back because things changed. The bulls proved it to me Friday morning and then this morning I said, wait a second, big red flag. I want that full hedge position in SQQQ back again. So entered that first thing as soon as the bell rang and then entered a lot of XLF bearish position in FAZ. And I'll talk about that and why in just a moment. But we can see the NASDAQ closed week, four hour oversold. I was watching really what the bulls are hoping for is their only hope tonight would be a broadening wedge formation here. And already it's starting to be a little bit iffy, but I was watching this heading into the close. And at that point in time, we were still holding right here and it was three touches and it was still holding. Then we had one more leg down into the end of the day. And on any bounce, we're just looking for an hourly lower high. And we would need to see a very notable bounce overnight tonight if the bulls are going to have any kind of confidence tomorrow. If we don't see that, and if QQQ bears keep their control, we are just looking for a weekly higher low. So we're not going to lose sight of that. Anything above 307.39 is a weekly higher low. And that is still about five, five and a half percent from where we stand. So that's the bigger picture. If this pullback were to be notable, we would then be talking about a potential head and shoulders if it were to hold. But again, this is just, I need to see tomorrow what our major sectors do because QQQ and XLF have been inverse and we know XLF is due for consolidation. I entered bearish today because of historical RSI levels and a gap up open. The bulls have been running for five days in a row. We gap up open. The daily RSI was at 76 or 77. And I look back historically and say, okay, over the last three years, every time we top out, the RSI is at 75 to 78. 
So we were at historical daily RSI, and I didn't even look at the weekly RSI, but chart guys, uh, I don't have who, but shout out, you know who you are. Chart guy member pointing out that the weekly RSI was reaching a level that has never been at before. So we hit an RSI of about 81 on the weekly. Look back here, we topped out at 80 in 2018. We topped out at 80 in December 2016. We have never seen a weekly RSI higher than this. So historical RSI levels showing us, at the very least, we're just due for daily consolidation. And at this point, I'm not looking to hit a home run on my FAZ short. I played FAZ, which is a three times inverse bear. My position right now is more sizable bearish in XLF than it is in the Qs because the Qs are much more extended to the downside and XLF is not. So I am just looking for XLF to give us a daily high or low, anything above 3604. But what I'm watching for very closely tomorrow, do we see? Because I was anticipating if XLF is going to see daily consolidation that we know is inevitable, I'm watching for QQQ to bounce when that happens, for them to keep up the inverse relationship and to keep the rotation game going and to keep the broader market strong. So if that doesn't happen, and if the tech sector keeps dropping while we consolidate on the daily in the healthcare sector and in the financial sector, that's when SPY sees fear and weakness. So I'm watching very close what our stronger sectors do tomorrow, XLV, Again, a little temporary top all-time highs for both XLF and XLV today. You can't have too much broader market fear if your two out of three major sectors are hitting all-time highs. It's what do we see from here? Do we keep daily uptrends? Do we see increasing bear volume? Do we see all three of our sectors at the low of the day at the same time tomorrow? Does QQQ start a more notable bounce while these names pull back? These are all questions I'm looking for tomorrow as far as having a gauge as to what to expect, how significant is fear going to be. IWM, daily lower high set now at 225.93. And if we drop down and break 218.64, we confirm a daily downtrend and the weekly higher lows, which have been holding for months, will be at risk. We've been holding them for eight months, seven or eight months. And if we drop down and break 215.24, we will lose the weekly EMA 12 for the first time in five months, and it'll just be a notable shift going on, bigger picture. QQQ, we're just looking for an hourly lower high next time we bounce. XLF, anytime we bounce here, we're just looking for an hourly lower high. The bears will have to confirm an hourly downtrend if daily consolidation is going to get follow through. XLV, same thing. We will have to confirm an hourly downtrend if we're going to see notable daily consolidation. But again, at the moment, unless bears show up with bear volume over the next couple days, we are just scouting higher lows in these sectors. XLF and XLV are the reason, one of the reasons, energy sector as well, one of the reasons that we are holding up in SPY while the tech sector has seen a decent amount of pullback over the last two weeks. And again, just in hindsight, the reason I entered an SQQQ position back here was because of how extended we were to the upside. I will always feel perfectly fine entering hedge bearish positions when we're that extended to the upside. Daily consolidation becomes inevitable at a certain point. And if it's a small enough position, then you can definitely wait it out and not have to nail the top. My positions right now, this is the most bearish exposure I've had on a swing overnight than I have had in as long as I can remember, which probably means at least a couple of months. And it was the QQQ red flag and the fact that XLF is at historical RSI levels and due for even just daily healthy consolidation. Biotech sector, another leg down. Actually, did we break it? 122.89 double bottom, daily lower high set. It's a bear flag. If we break 122.89, we're then looking down at 119.99 is the next level. Actually, 118.86 is the next level. Bears have complete control of these growth names still. We're not seeing rotation into the ARK ETFs. The EV space is extremely weak. We've got the biotech sector still weak, solar sector still weak. We're watching them all as a laggard category. But if we see fear in the broader market, even though these names are already extended to the downside, they can absolutely see another leg down. So bears have complete control there. And we have to force the bulls to prove it to us. 
SMH, daily lower high. Look at that drop. That is a huge red candle. If we break 232.80, the daily downtrend continues, and we're then looking down at 224.41. Hourly, anything under 237.19 is just an hourly lower high. Solar sector, daily bear flag confirmed. Look at the closes at the low of the day and how often that has been happening over the last two weeks. The bears still have complete control and we're looking down at 71.63, the low of today. Next level is 70.40 and then there's a gap down at 68.50. New short-term resistance is 77.52. Yes, we're looking for a monthly higher low Yes, we can easily see further downside before it is found. MSOS, gap up open in response to some major names making some moves. TCNNF bought out HARV to become the one of the largest players in the space. Not the largest, but I think it's the, the largest profitable USMJ operator. Either way, disappointing day for bulls. No FOMO, no euphoria, gap up in profit taking all day. And even before the broader market showed us weakness, that was the direction we were headed. So you can look at the broader market and say, well, that's part of the reason. And yes, that's absolutely the, the case, but it was weak before then. Bearish engulfing candle, earnings coming up for some major names in the sector and potential for weekly consolidation to try and set a higher low compared to our recent low. The VIX, what stands out the most to me here? The close at the high of the day. When's the last time the VIX closed at the high of the day? It's been a real long time. Last time it happened, we saw a notable follow through the following day. And again, that just shows me our sectors closing at the low and multiple sectors showing that weakness. So key level for the VIX to break would be 21.90 to try and negate the weekly bear flag and see daily uptrend follow through. Technically, still in a daily uptrend, 1670, a double bottom. The dollar, trying to bounce. We need a four hour trend change back to the bulls. Bulls have a lot of proving to do. Anything under 91.44 is just a daily lower high. Big flush down to end last week. And the metals responded real well to that breakout mode on the metals posted a chart on twitter for the break of 1800 on gold six minutes before it broke but four hour uptrend is our guide gold holding on stronger than silver bull break with a lack of follow-through but considering the broader market weakness all in all pretty healthy consolidation if we lose the four hour uptrend plenty of space for a daily higher low 1855 is the next resistance zone and silver is weaker you can see a big bearish reversal candle on the daily here. Four-hour drop, much more notable. And we'll be watching for a potential four-hour lower high next time we bounce. Miners, third gap up open in a row. Three gap up bearish reversal pattern, closing at the low of the day. Hourly, we're just going to look for an hourly lower high next bounce. If the low of today breaks tomorrow, daily consolidation underway, and we will be scouting a daily higher low. The bulls do have a lot of space to work with. There's an uptrending resistance line here to be keeping an eye on, which the bulls topped out just under. Oil is close to losing daily support. It held though. Daily higher low 63.90. If that level breaks, the odds increase of a weekly lower high being set and weekly consolidation. If that level holds, bulls keep complete control in the short term. All about 63.90 for the next few days. And resistance is 66.76. Natural gas, sideways, double top, bears, and quadruple bottom. So all I care about is 237, make that 293.7, and then four bottoms down at 2853. If we break support, we zoom out and scout a weekly higher low with a lot of space for it to form. So the energy sector, close to losing daily higher lows. I should say the commodities in the energy sector. Look at XLE. Gap up, tons of strength this morning. Profit taking. Correlated to XLV and XLF. Same daily candle. All bulls, but the first signs of daily consolidation on all three of those sectors. And here's Bitcoin's end of the day drop and absolutely impacted by fear in the tech sector and working on an hourly oversold bounce now. 
and I was trading ETH USD after the bell rang, and you can see why. Bounce of 10% in less than two hours so far. So overall, notable weakness. I have increased bearish positions more than I've had in a long time, and I am swinging them because of how we closed. If the bulls come out on top and everything is A-OK -okay and we see rotation, I'll maybe get back a day maker or two, which is just fine. Because again, these are protective positions. I definitely have a notable bear lean in my portfolio right now, but I am constantly shifting. And if it's an all clear signal tomorrow and all of our sectors aren't dropping at the same time and, and we get you know no fear follow through, I'll lighten up on those short positions. What trades did I take today? NIO oversold bounce on the morning. So NIO dropped down this morning. And here was a scenario where, again, another example where I got stopped out and jumped right back in the trade. And it's just from experience being comfortable doing that. So NIO was a waterfall drop with the 5 and 15 minute RSI crushed. And I was watching for $34 key support. And I thought it's unlikely we're going to get to $34 on this drop because we are too crushed in the short term. At the time that I'm trading the NIO bounce, I'm staring at QQQ at the same time, knowing that they're correlated. And at the bottom on NIO, we started to see a bullish correlation between NIO and QQQ, where NIO was holding fairly well, but QQQ kept hitting a low of the day. So what I did was I made an initial entry on this drop, 34.95 was the low. And I said, all right, I'm just gonna do a simple bottom fishing play. I'm not scaling into weakness. This two minute bounce had already started. And so I just entered with a market buy and I put my stop under 34.95 and my stop was 34.89. We got no bounce follow through and we broke that support. As soon as that support broke and I stopped out, I said, wait a minute, you just based your trade based off how you trade 95% of stocks, but you know NIO, after watching it and trading it, NIO is one of my more profitable tickers this year and it loves to break resistance right before topping and break support right before bottoming. As soon as I saw the bear break take place, and then this two minute base of support, and then the break of the lower high every two minute candle happening, I jumped right back in bullish. Yes, I bought back in higher than I stopped out at, but I didn't care knowing that we were likely to see the five minute oversold bounce get some follow through. From there, I exited half of my position. I forget where, but I then had very low risk, even including my initial stop out. My initial stop out was only a 25% day loser. The hindsight is I made a mistake. I should have just given more wiggle room. I know how NIO trades, but it took me a minute to get that realization. It took me stopping out to get that realization and to remedy my mistake. And then I let the bounce play out. We double topped at 36 and then broke it bull with a lack of follow through. Look at the bears just absolutely take over. And what I did here is I let this play out with my break even was down around the low of the day, maybe around 35 or so. And I let this whole thing play out. Why would I do that? Why would I get back a solid win and just watch it fade? And the reason is the entire time this is bouncing, I'm building my short positions. I'm entering multiple positions on FAZ. I've already got all of my SQQQ. So my mindset is, if we see follow through for the NIO bulls, that means QQQ is likely bouncing and I would want to offset the amount that my account is going to drop on the QQQ bounce because of my SQQQ position. So essentially my NIO bull trade was a hedge against my new hedges. And so by fading all the way back down and stopping out on a new low of the day with a small loss, it still ended up being, you know, maybe a 20% day loser. For this to happen my bearish positions were going up and notably offsetting it and then some. So that's why I let it fade all the way back down and stopped out into weakness as opposed to my normal exiting into strength, just anticipating an hourly lower high. So that was an uneventful trade and a small loss. Had a nice trade on coin. Coin bulls finally showing up. The scales tilted between supply and demand. This is the most convincing bullish day that this stock has ever had. Interesting because Bitcoin just had its most bearish day in the past couple weeks. 
And you can see we're giving back a decent bit in extended hours, down $10 from the high of the day. But the bull showed up in a big way with volume. And shout out to Chart Guys members that were on this because I've been ragging on the coin bulls for not proving anything. They proved it with this volume. And what I needed to see from there is, okay, great bounce off the low of the day. We've seen that before with the lack of follow through. Show me a five minute trend change on increasing bull volume. And we got it. And then we set another five minute higher low. And then we just rode the five minute EMA 12 support to a very notable gain from the low of the day to the high of the day. That is a 13% move. So I missed the initial move. And rather than FOMOing, I say, okay, well, I'm just going to enter the next five minute higher low. We held the EMA 12 support. We had a volume climax, little blow off top. And I entered at five minute EMA 12 support. I scaled in my first scale in 281.50. I was saving my second position for a break of 280. And I would have entered my second position. We didn't do it. And we started to bounce. So rather than waiting for weakness, I saw the bounce start to take place. And then I added to my position at 281.70. When I'm playing, when I'm scaling in for an entry, the vast majority of the time, my orders will be lower than each other. This one, my second order was higher because I bought into strength saying, I don't think we're going to break 280. And then as soon as I enter that second position, my stop loss goes under 280. I then sold half into the initial bounce, risk-free trade. And then I let it play out, exited the rest around 289 or so, definitely left some on the table. In hindsight, the smart thing to do would have been letting the two minute trend dictate the exit of the second half of my position. And really what it boils down to is I didn't want to sit through this 1% pullback, but that 1% pullback I exited here was just a two minute higher low. And then look at that ride up the two minute EMA 12 support for another 2% that I missed out on. So left some money on the table, but that was a solid day maker plus of a trade. And again, position sizing was the reason for that. And percentage wise, you know, if my my average is 281.60 to get up to the upper 280s, that is a two, three percent, two percent plus move, which is notable. So that was my best day trading trade of the day, aside from my SQQQ entry first thing. When did I exit F when did I enter FAZ? to go bearish on XLF? I'll tell you. So low of the day, high of the day, higher low, higher high, big drop. I'm watching here and saying, I'm gonna enter bearish if we hit a new low of the day. We didn't, we V-shaped bounce. I start scaling in here. Bear entry, bear entry, new high of the day by two pennies, no biggie. And then very comfortable from there for the rest of the day. So a couple little scale ins based off the high, but certainly giving more than just two pennies of wiggle room and the end of the day flush on volume. So that is where we stand. Solid day to start the week. And tomorrow overnight is going to make or break, you know, whether I open tomorrow with a day loser or a day or two maker. But today is giving me a bit of a cushion where I am willing to risk some of today's profits to have a more sizable bearish position overnight because I saw enough to have those positions. Nice follow through ETH USD. All right, crypto live stream coming up. I appreciate you tuning in. Don't forget to do good things. I've got, let's see, what are, end of the video here. Took a video of some tree frogs. There's tree frogs that are living under my hot tub cover. There were two last year, there's three now. First off, their ability to camouflage is incredible because it's a marble pattern shell of the hot tub and it's gray and white and some maroon and just marble swirl. And their color is completely different based on where they are sitting on that pattern and it's pitch black under that hood, the, under the cover. They can't, there's no light whatsoever. So their bodies are able to recognize the pattern in the absence of ultraviolet light. And it blows my mind. I have no idea how that's possible, but it's a funny situation because they all live there now. And my empathy has me choosing to not use the hot tub because I don't want to disturb the frogs under the cover. And they've got a nice 
humid, warm, because it's still chilly at night. It's in the 40s, and these are tree frogs. So they are in a happy place. I think I took a video of them. See you tomorrow. Got some more crepe myrtles, clematis, peonies. No idea what that is, but we got it. Squirrels are the original farmers. They've been taking the sunflower seeds and corn all winter. They eat some of it, they stash the rest. They forget a bunch of it so it becomes plants. But I've also been watching them come and eat these microgreens. So they eat the seeds, they eat the greens, and then what they forget becomes plants. Potatoes are coming up.